So over the last few weeks, Rock has been laying the foundation not just to take over Southside, but also expand into other territories, which is why she's so intrigued by Cartier. Cartier Fareed definitely knows how to talk the talk, and he showed he's someone who means business. I'm gonna need a hand loading that painting into your car. Well, there's your hand, bitch. What you want, another one? But we still don't know the ins and outs of Cartier, and he remains a bit of a mystery, although we are learning about him as each episode passes by. So far, we know he's Cartier both in the streets and in the real world of business. He also dips into various business ideas, whether it be music, art, or the street game in DC and Baltimore, because those are the areas where it's less crowded and where the margins are bigger. So we're gonna see Rock step into Joaquin with regards to her expansion, but something which caught my eye on a rewatch of the trailer was this. Rock was being watched, who by is yet to be seen, but there is definitely more to this sit down with Joaquin. But we're gonna run through all things about Rock's expansion, the trouble with Detective Berg, Howard and Unique, and how he could be a major problem through Marvin's actions. So as usual, we're gonna be running through some exclusive clips, images and breakdown of the synopsis. Now, the episode title is No Love Lost, and the synopsis reads, A botched agreement with Marvin, an associate threatens everything. Bear gains traction in her investigation, and Rock searches for a new house. And we're gonna start with this botched agreement between Marvin and an associate, because in my opinion, this is something that will cause a ripple effect through Rock's entire organization, Salbacelli's, and eventually Unique. So for those who watched my breakdown and analysis earlier this week, I broke down how Marvin's targeting Tony, and the reason why he wants Tony dead is because she's a snitch, and we all know Marvin hates rats. So he's hated snitches from day one, and even though he got off lightly from his drug charge, it seems like he doesn't want any sort of risk, so he wants her dead. And there was a key clue in episode 6 with how he plans on killing Tony, and that's by teaming up with Marco, because he learned that Tony now lives in Westchester, and so does Marco, and it's quite easy to put two and two together from the trailer to what's happened in the past few weeks. Tony's time is probably coming to an end. But where this gets a little bit more unpredictable is what goes wrong in this plan to kill Tony, because from the synopsis, it describes Marvin's plan as a botched agreement with an associate that threatens everything. And one can only assume, if the Italians are involved, it's going to have some sort of consequence on their side, which will cause some tension between the Italians and Rock. But to make things worse, Unique's in the middle. One amendment to our agreement. Unique gonna run the operation at work. I want someone there I know and trust. Now, Unique cleverly navigated this situation to get himself back in the game, because it was no coincidence Warrell said his cousin had a spot out in Jersey, an area which the Italians occupy, which are the same Italians that Unique now has a close relationship with through Marco. And so the back and forth between Salbacelli and Rock needed a mediator, and Unique played it inch perfect to the point. Rock had to approach him for help. So with Unique back in the game, what does he do next? Because I've already said before, two alphas can't wear together, eventually something has to give, and I wouldn't be surprised if Unique used this whole situation that fucks up between Marvin and Marco to his advantage. So let's see how Unique plays this, because he's someone who's shown a different layer to his character in Season 2, this side to him where he's been patient, thinking three moves ahead, and striking at the right moment. I feel like I just hit the buzzer beater though. Now, regardless of whether Unique thinks he's hit the buzzer beater, we're gonna see Rock continuing with her expansion, but she's also working with the same man who held Juliana hostage, Unique. And Juliana also happens to be the cousin of Joaquin. So we are yet to see what Joaquin makes of Juliana being taken by Unique. And instead of Rock putting a bullet in him for fucking with her business, she gave him a job instead albeit forced by Salbacelli, but whatever happens, nothing seems like it's stopping Rock from moving forward with her expansion, and Joaquin will never say no, as long as Rock doesn't bring problems to his doorstep, because he is much like Dean, who they described as silent, but violent. Now, one way Rock is pushing her expansion is through Cartier for Reed, so circling back to the beginning of this video, we're gonna see them at dinner, and we all know Rock is a queen of manipulation, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see Rock manipulating this situation to her benefit, because at the end of the day, this is their game, and there are no friends in the streets, and Rock is just using Cartier as a pawn to get what she wants, but she does need to be careful, Cartier seems like someone who's been in the game for a long time, and he's a level above Rock when it comes to the legit side and the street game, 
and so we're gonna see him making a move of his own. He knows that Lou's in trouble, and the only way forward is a partnership with Cartier. But why is Lou approaching Cartier and not Rock? This goes back to how Rock told him it's time he puts family business first, and so if Lou approaches Rock for money again, I don't think she'll give him a dime, and so Cartier seems like he's his only option. But we all know Cartier will only do a deal if it benefits him. And I do think we need to question Lou. He may have the passion for music, but there are some things that Crown could do that he couldn't. And I think he's about to find out how tough the music world really is, because he can't exactly behave the same way he does in the streets, in the boardroom. For example, we saw two layers to James St. Patrick. There was a street side where he could kill when he wanted to, but there was also this business savvy James St. Patrick, and he had an aura about him when he entered the room. People wanted to know more behind the man of James St. Patrick. For example, Simon Stern and Cynthia Sheridan. But this is something we haven't seen from Lou. So let's see how he navigates the real world of business along with the street game. So coming back round to Rock, this was an exclusive clip between Symphony and Kanan. Got a job offer in North Carolina. Charlotte. They want me to be the transport planner there. But somewhere in between, we're gonna see Detective Burke questioning Symphony, and she's someone who's really starting to become a problem for both Rock and Howard, because she is getting closer as each episode passes by, and now she has Symphony on her radar, and before Symphony heads out of town, he's gonna tell Rock about Burke stepping to her, but what Rock does with this information is yet to be seen, but she definitely will have this conversation with Detective Howard, that's for sure. So these are a few exclusive images between Howard and Rock. And we're gonna hear Howard question Rock. What is she gonna do when Kanan sees through all of her lies? And that's gonna happen soon. Something we haven't seen from Kanan is opening the paternity results that Howard gave him at the end of episode 6. And when he does, whether it's in episode 7, 8, or 9, this is gonna cause a rift between them. And we've already seen Kanan leaning on Howard as well as Palomar. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see him pushed even further because Rock can lie all she wants, but the facts are there in black and white. Howard is Kanan's father. Now elsewhere, a story that we're continuing to see is Duke and Kenya, and sooner or later, I do expect there to be a huge twist and for the writers to throw us a curveball, because so far for the most part, Duke has been upset about Nicole until she built this relationship with Kenya, but Rock did wipe her smile off her face because blood doesn't necessarily make you family. And despite how manipulative Rock is, she is right, it's all about loyalty, and eventually this will come crashing down. But that's a preview on all things episode 7, and two of the main talking points are these problems that just keep mounting up for Rock, and Marvin potentially fucking shit up. So drop all your thoughts down below on all things episode 7, and of course if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.